This will be a short demonstration of the QuoteSoft duct estimating software. I'm going to cover how to create a job and do takeoff in our program. What I hope to show in this short video is how over 25 years we've become the industry leader in duct estimating software. And so let's get right into it. To create a job in our program, first I have to hit the job file button. And all I have to do is select my folder here and then hit new job. And we'll call this the uh, video demo building. Um, all I have to do is put in the name of the project and hit create. Once I've created the project, then I need to attach the drawings in this section here. And so I can go out to uh, my duct drawings here. And all I have to do is simply drag and drop these into this section here. Or I could do a right click copy and right click paste. And so as you can see, it's very simple to create a project in our system. Um, all you do is hit new job, put in a name, copy and paste the drawings here, and then we're ready to start our takeoff. To get the takeoff, we're going to create a zone by hitting new zone. We'll select our plan file and one QuoteSoft offices, and then select our pressure class. QuoteSoft comes out of the box with pre-made pressure files set to smack the standards for galvanized aluminum stainless uh, double wall, um, as well as cool duct and duct board in all the various different configurations. These can be, of course, modified to your shop standards, uh, which is a big reason why QuoteSoft is one of the leaders among contractors who are building their own ducts. And so for this takeoff, we're going to select the 2-inch low-pressure galvanized with fab and install and hit Create Zone. Once we get into the takeoff screen here, first thing I need to do is set my scale. This is a quarter inch drawing. And so all I have to do is just set this to quarter inch. Um, but I can also set the scale according to a custom uh, scale based on the dimensions on a drawing, maybe a doorway uh, or some other known dimension. To get into the takeoff here, the most basic uh, level the takeoff works is you just simply click on the duct, click on the two sizes, we'll say 14 by 12, and now I'm ready to scale 14 by 12 duct. It literally is that simple. Okay, but what I want to show you here is how we can do a thing we call auto duct, which you, you go from fitting to fitting, and it's going to fill the duct in between automatically. Um, and so first, coming off of this fan coil unit, first we're going to take off the actual fan coil itself. So we'll go to equipment catalog, fan coil units. Uh, we'll say it's 1,000 CFM, and we'll go ahead and take that off. Okay. Um, then we're going to start from this supply here. We're going to go to our flex duct. We're going to say this is 14 by 12. We'll click here. We'll go to my 90, which is the next fitting, and it knows I'm in 14 by 12. We'll go down to my uh, one-way transition down to 10 by 12, and then all we have to do is hit the cap. It knows I'm in 10 by 12 now, and, uh, and that ends my run. For each one of these grill connections, I have a supply connection assembly that includes a Hedo, volume damper, flex duct, three-cone diffuser, um, adjustable elbow, and, uh, and then we'll use a snap lock here uh, to get out to these, uh, to these grills, right? So very quickly, I can take off the supply portion of this fan cool unit. To come back around and do the return here, uh, this is 34 by 16, so I simply click duct, I hit 34, I hit 16, and then I click at one end, click at the other. Uh, we'll put a cap on the end of that, and then we've got a, an angle uh, tap in here that goes down to 18 by 12, so I just simply hit 18, 12, place that where it goes, and then we'll say this goes to a 90 down to this return grill. All right, so very quickly, I'm able to take off the supply and return for this fan coil unit and, uh, and, and with all the parts and pieces involved. From there, this drawing here has lots of repetition, so I can simply just highlight this, right-click copy, right-click paste, and uh, that was a pretty decent shot, <laughs> and that uh, will simply paste here. But of course, if you don't paste it into the right location, you can just simply drag and move it. And we can also flip this horizontally or uh, in cases up here or in cases like down here where this is the same kind of thing, but it's not quite uh, lined up here. We can just simply rotate this to be up and down best I can there. And then just simply drag this uh, roughly where it goes there. Now, of course, these aren't perfect. These are slightly different, but you know, all I have to do then is just simply highlight this stuff and kind of move it around a little bit and, uh, and you, you get the idea. And so very quickly, I can cover a lot of ground in a, uh, in a drawing like this. And uh, you see I was able to take all of this off very quickly. And all I have to do is come back and just make some minor adjustments uh, to this, such as maybe extending this return line 
and uh, and so forth. Okay, and so very fast takeoff, very basic, very easy to use. Almost all uh, contractors, after just one or two trainings, can do a takeoff in our program. But I want to talk a little bit about some of the more detailed aspects we have over here to the right. First, if I select duct here, you see my components over to the right. And I've got this set up uh, in such a way where I can simply add liner, wrap, change the gauge, change the joint or sealant or seam on any piece of duct I'm going to take off. Um, by simply just pulling the drop down. If instead of galvanized strap, I wanted this to have a unistrut or an angle hanger or maybe gripple, all I do is just simply make the change, and now I've changed that hanger over to a gripple hanger. And so it's a very simple thing to do here. Same thing with adding liner. If I just pull this drop down, add the liner, it oversizes the duct. You see it's 18 by 12 on the inside, 20 by 14 on the outside, and, uh, and, and does all that in real time. It makes it very easy to make changes. This is a very important reason why we've been able to get so many top mechanicals used on our program is because of how easy it is to make those changes on the fly uh, without having to load a completely different file with different parameters preset. Also over here to the left, we've got item details. So this piece of duct, it shows you the dimensions, the weight, the square foot, uh, the length, and so forth, how many hangers are involved. And then we also have the fab labor, install labor, material cost, labor cost, all listed out here below. And these can be expanded. So if you want to see where that material cost was coming from, uh, you can see $23 of that 27 is from the galvanized metal, the 24 gauge metal itself. And then we've got about a buck 55 for the joint and so forth, uh, another $2 for the hanger, and all of that adds up uh, to this $27.23. Likewise, with the labor, you can expand this out and see where this labor is coming from, a lot of it from the item itself, some of it from the hanger, and this makes it really easy to go through and dissect a job. And because we have this real-time uh, data on price and, and labor, I can go to any one of these sections here on my drawing, and I can highlight it and say, what is my total labor uh, or total cost for FanCoil Unit 1 by just simply going to Quick Totals. This shows you the total pounds, total square feet, total fab and install hours, um, and so forth. And then the grand total here of 24, 14, 35. And so once you input uh, some very basic things in our program, such as just your metal cost per pound um, and, and other costs for things like hangers and joints and sealants, uh, it will produce a, an at-cost number uh, for any uh, section that you can highlight here on the drawing. And if we want to take this out to a report, we can just simply hit export. Um, we'll call this fan clue unit one. Hit save. And it's going to go out to an Excel file that will uh, show you the, the same information that we can see here, uh, plus a little bit extra. And so this can then be um, sent out. Uh, it's actually opening up on my other screen here. And so we'll drag this over. This can then be sent out. You see it's got the same summary information, but if I go to an item list, it has a detailed item list with the labor and material uh, listed out there as well. And so this kind of thing can then be sent out to a project manager in the field who's maybe going to work on that section of the project um, or could be used to go in and maybe uh, uh, back up a change order or an addendum. <clears throat> and so um, that was just a, a quick, brief introduction. Now this screen is very busy here. And so I want to show you here, our, one of the main advantages of Quotesoft is how flexible this screen is. Some of our contractors like to have um, the catalog open, the components, the pressure class, see all this information in real time. But of course, that cuts into your drawing space. And so I have a view here. I can go to uh, Manage Workspaces, and we'll load my simple screen. And this is a much different view. It gets you a lot more drawing area and, uh, and just has the picture of the duct and the audit trail on the right. All of the other components are still here. I still have my assemblies. I still have my pressure class, item details, components. But those are all tabbed now on the left, and only my main takeoff items here uh, in the drawing are available. And so um, that, that uh, can be very helpful. So now I want to take just a brief couple minutes and go to a project that is fully taken off and show you a little bit more in our system. All right, so this is a drawing that has been completely taken off, and you see my, my simple screen set up here uh, for this drawing as well. But what I want to show you here, what I want to draw your attention to is the audit trail on the right. One of the huge advantages of our program is what we can do with this audit trail in terms of sorting and filtering. Um, takeoff software and estimating software, it's important to get a program that is good on the initial takeoff, 
but it's also very important to, to get a program that makes it easy to make changes after the fact when addendums and, and different questions and so forth come up. And so if I can, uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag out this audit trail here. And again, every one of these windows is very customizable uh, in terms of size, uh, location. I can put this on its own monitor if I wanted to. And you'll notice here, um, I have a lot of information. So most programs will show you just the name, dimension. They might show you liner and wrap. We show you fab labor, install labor, any install factors you have on this project, um, grand total for each item, uh, what hanger is being used on each item, what subzone it's a part of, meaning what, what uh, whether it's rooftop unit three or so forth, what system it's a part of, what phase it's a part of, what pressure class it's made up of, and any one of these, what type of item, what, what report group it's a part of, and any one of these can be, uh, can be sorted and filtered. So for example, if I got a question on uh, what would happen if we just uh, uh, deducted rooftop unit three entirely, I can sort and filter by rooftop unit three, hit OK. It's going to refilter my audit trail. And if I, you'll notice if I go back to my drawing, I can even uh, print out a screenshot of just rooftop unit three and all of the ducts involved with it. You see it's only showing that duct now. And once we get in here, I can make changes very easily. I could say, you know what, I want to maybe uh, make a change to all of the liners. So I can uh, hit Control A. I can highlight all of the items in here, go to Global Edit, and very simply change the liner. Maybe instead of one inch, maybe now it's two inch liner, right? on all my rectangular, and instead of two inch wrap on the spiral, uh, maybe on the round here, we'll say instead of two inch wrap, it's just gonna be one inch wrap, right? And so we'll just make those changes. I'll hit save changes. It's gonna go through and, and uh, perform those changes and you'll see those reflected in the audit trail uh, once it's done making the change. Now it's making a change to, you know, 100, 100 or so items here. And so it will take a second to crunch those numbers, but just keep in mind how quickly we were able to identify the area we wanted to change, select the change, make it, and you see now the, save is, the changes are saved. The duct here, you see my rectangular duct now is two inch liner, and my spiral now has one inch wrap. And uh, the adjustable elbows, these are uh, going to be um, catalog items, and so of course they would be changed in the global change as well under a different category. And so you see how easy it is for me to, to if I want to look at say just the supply, I can click on just the supply, hit OK, and now it's going to show me on the screen just Rooftop Unit 3 Supply, and that's all the items I have here available. And so, you know, again, we looked at those quick totals on the other screen, and so if I wanted to know, we'll just double-click my audit trail, send that back. I have filtered by Rooftop Unit 3. Now I can highlight these items and simply just go out to Quick Totals, and if I want to know exactly what my cost is, again, this is not including your overhead or profit, which are added in when you finalize the project at the end, um, right here, uh, this is your at cost for rooftop unit three, $8,481.50. And so this was a pretty detailed uh, walkthrough here, um, but there's a lot more that I'd love to show you. If you like what you've seen here and want to see a full demonstration of the program, uh, just let me know and uh, we'll, we'll uh, arrange that. Thank you.